How annoying is it to be the party leader and have everyone asking when Nigel Farage is going to come and take over from you? Completely the opposite. Um, uh, the more encouragement more people give to Nigel. Look, Nigel's been involved in politics for 25 years. He's the most experienced politician in this country. I've been involved for four or five years. So the more help, the better. Richard Tyes, thanks a lot for joining us. At the last election, you stood aside for the Tories in many seats. Why not do the same again this time? It makes sense, doesn't it? No, absolutely not. In fact, we did the right thing for the country then. They had an opportunity. We gave them an 80-seat majority. They've broken Britain. They've betrayed Britain. They've betrayed all their promises. Frankly, they should stand aside after such an appalling performance. Let me take on Keir Starmer head-to-head. I'll beat him hands down. The truth is, they've betrayed all of their promises. They cannot be forgiven for that. They need punishing. They need ousting. And what I'm saying to people, though, is that... The, the mainstream alternative under our electoral system, the Labour Party, that is Starmageddon, and it will be a catastrophic cocktail of disaster for the country. But if you're really going to stand in every seat, as you've just said you're going Wales, to, yes. well, all you're going to do is split the Tory vote and make it more no, likely no. that more Labour MPs are elected and give Keir Starmer a greater chance of winning an overall majority. Voters from all parties or no parties including working-class Labour voters, strong Brexiteers, millions and millions of them, know that they are poorer at the moment under either of the main two parties because of mass immigration, because of the cost of net zero, the cost of energy. And and as more and more people become aware of us, they look at our policies, they say, thank heavens, someone is telling it as it is. And so we're saying to everybody, if you want change, if you're feeling worse off, then you've got to vote for change. But this election ultimately will be a choice between a Labour or a Conservative government. And by standing against those Tories, you risk taking Tory votes, making a Labour government more likely. That's surely the last thing you want, isn't it? You have to punish failure. You cannot reward failure with more incumbency. They've How many chance, seats are you going to win then, they've Richard? Had the chance they've blown it. Well, it's a great question. And... Um, I know many things, but I can't forecast into the future like that. What I can say is the more millions of people who vote for us, the more people will realise that actually our electoral system is broken, the two-party system is broken, we need proportional representation, we need competition between different parties, disruptors coming forward, new people with new ideas. That's how you make performance, that's how you get the country run better. Nigel Farage has stood seven times to try to get himself elected. You've been full of praise for his talents and what he brings to politics if he can't get himself elected why should anyone vote for any of the other reform candidates that you're going to be putting up at this election the only individual that has led two different political parties to winning elections uh, european elections under the proportional representation system and that's one of our key policies yeah but you're not going to get a proportional system you've got to win under a first past the post system how many mps are you going to have well let's hope the more people who vote for us the more we will get. Here's the thing, though. If you want to, if you want to shape an influence, you've got to be on the ballot paper. We're in, on, we'll be on the ballot paper everywhere in England, Scotland, Wales. And this is not a one-election strategy. This is a multi-election strategy. Changing the way a country is run doesn't happen overnight. But we're determined to be involved, determined to shape an influence, and that's why we're here. We've been hearing from donors that it would make a big difference if Nigel Farage did take a more active role, did replace you as party leader. What role is Nigel Farage going to play in the reform election campaign? Actually, look, I, I want him to play as big a part as possible. And for us, you see, it's actually about action and outcomes. It's not about titles. It's not about me. It's about saving Britain. And so we're not precious about the titles. We, what we want is to have a serious role in reshaping the debate and, bluntly, our policies are the only policies that can save Britain. So, as I said, I'm very clear about it. The more help Nigel feels able to give, the better. Uh, but he's got to work that out for himself relative to his other obligations and commitments, and he's 60 this year. And when people talk about Nigel Farage, um, they feel that he could make a difference to your party's prospects. Without him... What is your best hope? How many seats could you realistically actually win at the next election? Hey, look, we're not um, kidding anybody. First past the post is difficult. It's why we don't like it. Um, but we stand everywhere and we will do the very best we can. I think we can make a real difference and we've got a cracking opportunity of winning a decent number of seats. It's not easy, but you know what? Just because it's not easy doesn't mean you shouldn't try in the first place. And what you cannot do 
is cowardly bottle it because it's too difficult when you know that the alternative, the main two parties, the Tories have failed and Labour represents a catastrophe in terms of their policies for the country. Wouldn't the Tories, a future Tory government though, be more likely to deliver more of the policies that you want to see than a Labour government would? I'm hoping we've seen the last majority Tory government in my lifetime. I'm 59. I'm actually really quite optimistic about that. I think we will get proportional representation before the next election after this coming one this year and we will play a significant role in that. So that would be a very good thing in my view. How annoying is it to be the party leader and have everyone asking when Nigel Farage is going to come and take over from you? Completely the opposite. Um, uh, The more encouragement more people give to Nigel... Look, Nigel's been involved in politics for 25 years. He's the most experienced politician in this country. I've been involved for four or five years. So the more help the better. It's, uh, and, and the more people that talk about it, the more they're talking about reform, the awareness of reform grows, people look at the policies and they say, yeah, do you know what? These people are standing up for me and what I think, and that's a good thing. Starmageddon, though, which you've been talking about, um, your overall strategy is going to make Starmageddon, as you call it, a, a Starmer-led government more likely, isn't it? Look, what we're doing is highlighting to the country the risks in every constituency of voting for Starmageddon. And then the voters have the choice. That's how democracy works. The more debate, the more choice people have, then ultimately, hopefully, the better the answer. We obviously hope people agree with our policies. Well, what would you do that is different from what the Conservatives are offering at the next election? Well, the Conservatives are basically a form of socialism. I mean, high taxes, high regulations, high wasteful government spending, mass immigration, completely betraying all the promises they've made, and pro-net zero, the multi-trillion cost of net zero that'll make not a jot of difference, as Tony Blair admitted, not a jot of difference to the multi-billion year global climate change. Richard Tice, thank you very much.